Good morning. It's Sunday, May 31st, 2020. It's the 12th Sunday. Our church cannot gather due to precautionary measures against COVID-19. And I want to apologize for the technical problems we had last week with our live stream. I don't know how much of it was faulty technology and how much of it was just that I was sick and not exactly on my game. Uh, speaking of which, thank you for checking in on me this past week. I began to feel a little bit better towards the middle and end of this past week. And even though things still wear me out pretty quickly, I feel pretty good. Uh, the thing I feel best about is what is happening right now. Uh, so it's time to gather up every burden and cast our cares onto Jesus. So let's begin. Tune everything else out and let's worship. So we begin uh, our online worship service this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Apostles' Creed has been the church's confession of faith in the God of the Bible for over 1,600 years. So, you know, even though we remain physically distanced from each other this morning in our worship, our faith binds us together. A creed is just a statement of what you believe. So as each of the statements appear in the following video, please confess your faith along with millions of other Christians across time and distance. And when the video is done, let us know that you believe. Add a comment or an emoji to the chat. <laughs> now, let's confess our faith.
prayer of confession is an acknowledgement to God that you're in need of his forgiveness, that the forgiveness won by Jesus on the cross is the only solution to your problem of sin. So I invite you now to join me as we confess our sins together. Heavenly Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and I sincerely repent of them. And I pray that by your boundless mercy and by the innocent suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you would be gracious to me and forgive me sinner that I am. Amen. God is gracious to forgive those who come to him in humility as you just have. And so as a called and ordained servant of the word of God, I announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Having been relieved of our burdens, we now use our voices to cry out to God on behalf of one another, our community, and our world. We pray together for the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of the truth. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Holy Cross Lutheran Church, for the work of the kingdom in our community, and for the resources to accomplish all that God desires, that his name may be glorified among us, and his purpose fulfilled in our words and works, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their needs, 
and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and those who suffer, that God would grant healing to their bodies and peace for their minds and consolation in their grief and sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations and for an end to terror and violence so that we may work for the common good that justice may prevail, that life be protected, that truth abound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. So into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Today's reading is from John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. Tensions are rising all around Jesus. He isn't fitting into the mold of what those first century religious leaders would have expected from a holy man. And yet, miracle after miracle, Jesus fits the mold proclaimed by the prophets. When you see the Messiah, they said, The blind will see, the lame will walk, and the poor will have good news proclaimed to them. Now, for anyone paying attention, Jesus is absolutely showing himself to be the Messiah, God born as man to save the world from death and hell. 
In today's reading, we don't have a miracle, but we do hear the good news. Let's listen to John chapter 8. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and he taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, placing her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law of Moses, we're commanded to stone such a woman. What do you say? This they said to test Jesus, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. This is God's word. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that is engaging us in meditation today is that story you just heard from John chapter 8, probably one of the more famous stories of Jesus. In fact, if you've ever seen a movie about the life and times of Jesus, you this scene was probably in it. Movie makers love this scene. It's dramatic and it really expresses uh, the compassion, the mercy, the love, and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is interacting with two different kinds of people in this story, and then there's a third. I'd like to show you those details as we look more deeply into this story that is commonly referred to as the woman caught in adultery. The scene is fairly clear. Jesus has spent the night in the Mount of Olives. He liked to go out that way to pray. Uh, the next morning he came in and he sat down at the temple and he began to teach the people. Jesus was well known as a teacher. And as he was in the midst of giving his lesson for the day, he was interrupted by this group of scribes and Pharisees who came barging in on his little classroom and they're dragging a naked woman, I believe she was a naked woman, in with her because she's been caught in the act of adultery. Uh, very quickly, adultery simply means that she was having sex with someone she wasn't married to. Now, they throw her at Jesus' feet, and then they ask their question. And I think they've been planning this one for a while, and I'll explain more about that in just a few minutes. But they say to Jesus, look, according to our interpretation of the law of Moses, uh, we should be killing this woman. We should stone her to death. It's brutal. Just throw rocks at her until she's dead. That was how they handled things. And um, they believed that according to the law of Moses, uh, that was the, a proper punishment for this person who had been caught in adultery. You understand when they say, uh, according to Moses, they're talking about the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They just referred to it as Moses because Moses was the, the one who wrote it. So they figure they've got Jesus trapped, which was really what they were after. They were opposed to Jesus. And the reason they think that Jesus is going to be trapped by their question is because they know that Jesus is not going to participate in this punishment, capital punishment, for this woman. They seem to know this because they know that they've trapped him. They think that he's going to violate their interpretation of the law. That's the trap. 
Well, then the drama begins, quiet drama. And maybe this is why the movie makers love this scene, because Jesus listens, and then he pauses, and he quietly bends down and begins to trace something out, maybe with his finger in the sand. We don't know what he's tracing. In fact, I've read and heard all kinds of mischievous conjecture about what he must have been writing. And look, the Bible doesn't tell us, so we don't need to know. Um, it is worth asking, though, wh what's going on here? It is, in, it, it is in there, and the reason it's in there is because the people who saw this happen, who put it in the Bible to begin with, they saw it, it happened in front of them, so they, they put it in. So they, they see Jesus bend down and, and do this thing, and I suspect that Jesus is just kind of creating some quiet space. Maybe he wants people to think a bit. Maybe he wants to make sure that the next thing he says is heard by everyone. Because the next thing he says is this. Well, whoever among you who is without sin, throw first. Now, Jesus says this knowing that every single person in the temple, other than himself, has a sin problem. And so, well, maybe I'm thinking that this poor woman who's at his feet might have heard what Jesus said and, and thought, oh, no, this is going to be terrible. Uh, Jesus knows better, and he knows that he's just challenged them to... To say to Jesus, I have no sin. Now, uh, John, the, the guy whose name is at the head of this book, also wrote a letter where he said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Uh, John must have learned this from Jesus. <laughs> and so John may be watching all this happening, and, and one by one, it says, starting with the elders, one by one, these accusers of this woman, one by one, they, they exit. Until finally, it's just this woman. All of her accusers have left. And he looks down to the woman and says, where are they? Are there, are there none left who are accusing you? And she's like, no, no, they're, they're all gone. Jesus says, I won't condemn you either. He forgives her. And then he says something just as important. He says, now go and stop sinning. So, I don't know, um, usually when I see this scene take place in the movies, they depict Jesus saying, neither do I condemn you, and that's the end of the scene. They leave out the part where Jesus says, now, go and sin no more. But Jesus forgives sins in order to create a, a holy relationship with God in the person who's been forgiven, so that that person can then return to life free from the burden of those sins, ideally to live a life where they don't recur. Now, I said that Jesus is dealing with two different kinds of people here. First, I want to show you that there's a certain kind of person, the group of the scribes and Pharisees. These are the people that brought the woman in and they've accused her. And in what they've done and in the way Jesus has shown them that they too are guilty, and incidentally, Jesus' little maneuver here kind of shows that there is no one sin that's any worse than another. They're all, all of, all sins are equal in God's sight. They're all despicable. But by kind of throwing the question back on the scribes and Pharisees, he is inviting them also to confess their sins, which they don't do. 
Why don't they stay? Why don't they join the woman at Jesus' feet? Why don't the scribes and Pharisees fall on the ground and say, Lord, forgive me, I've sinned too? Why do they slink off in shame? Because there are a kind of people, there is a kind of person in this world who is in tune with their brokenness. They know, they they have a concept that things aren't quite right about themselves. They know that there are things about themselves that, that they're not comfortable with, they're not right with. There are lots of people in this world like these scribes and Pharisees who know they're not perfect, but they will not submit themselves to Jesus in confession so that they might receive forgiveness. Don't be one of those. Instead, be like this second kind of person the kind where I like to think I can find myself or I want to find myself in this woman who's been thrown at the feet of Jesus, caught in the act. She knows she's guilty, just as the scribes and Pharisees know they're guilty as well. But she didn't leave. She stayed at Jesus' feet And she received his forgiveness. And she received his command to live a holy life. Now, when you stay as a guilty sinner, when you stay at the feet of Jesus, it isn't like Jesus lets you off the hook. And that's my problem with the way the movies depict this scene. Jesus just lets, him, lets her off the hook and the scene ends. But instead, what Jesus does is he puts himself on the hook for her. When he tells her to go and sin no more, you know what she does? Probably. She, like the rest of us, <laughs> she continues to struggle with sinful patterns and sinful behaviors the rest of her life. And if you're like me, you do that and you continue to, to throw yourself at the feet of Jesus because the real gospel, the real Christianity, the real Jesus isn't the one who just erases your sin. He places himself on the hook for you. Instead of no stones being thrown at all, he lets the stones be thrown at him. He lets the spear be thrown, be pierced into his own side. He lets the thorns pierce his own flesh as he suffers and dies the true condemnation that the woman deserves and that those scribes and Pharisees deserve and that you deserve and that I deserve. Jesus puts himself on the hook for you. And that's why you throw yourself at his feet. See, there are two kinds of people. There are the ones who will not throw themselves at the feet of Jesus. The ones who say, I, I'm, I'm not in need of what forgiveness you have to offer. And to those people, Jesus has no good word. But then there are the others, you and me, who humbly cast ourselves at the feet of Jesus, like we did in our confession just a few minutes ago, and we received Jesus' forgiveness. Now, I said that there was a third kind of person And this has to do with why I think that these scribes and Pharisees have been planning this all along. And the question that might be hanging in the air is, wait a second, she was caught in adultery. Where's the guy she was caught with? Now, my guess is, again, we don't know, so this is conjecture. My guess is that he was in on the plot with these scribes and Pharisees to to get this woman trapped to put her at the feet of Jesus. 
But where's the guy? Shouldn't there be a naked man cast in front of the feet of Jesus as well? There is actually a third kind of a person, and that is the kind of person who has no concept of his need for Jesus at all, no idea that he is a sinner at all. You do not want to be that kind of person. And I think that if you've been participating in this worship service up until now, you can know that that isn't you. You've been brought to the feet of Jesus today. Now receive his forgiveness and he comes to your rescue. Amen.
I'd like to point out one very important thing we know about what happens to people when they worship. Human beings worship all kinds of things, and the things we worship shape us. We're formed by the things we worship. And so Christian worship is good because it forms us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Now, it's also true that the more conscientious we are about worship, the more difficult it becomes. This is because worship puts us beneath that which is being worshipped. Now, giving is a part of worship, so if you struggle with giving, see, that's normal. But I want to encourage you to try. Give joyfully, knowing that the God who is receiving your gift is transforming you into the beautiful likeness of his Son, your Savior, Jesus. Now, if you regularly give to another church, please do that now. But all of the gifts that we receive here at Holy Cross are used in one way or another to serve our community and our world with God's love in Jesus Christ. So if you would like to support our work, you can find a link for electronic giving at hclc.life slash giving or by mailing your offering to Holy Cross Lutheran Church, 280 Crosswicks Road, Bordentown, New Jersey, 08505. Now, I want to tell you a little bit more about one of the ministries that we have here at Holy Cross that we're particularly thankful for, and that is our preschool. Uh, they're just wrapping up for the year, and uh, I, I want to say thank you to our preschool teachers for putting in an awesome year, uh, a challenging end to the year. And I want to tell you a little bit about how our preschool handled the pandemic. When we realized that our classrooms were going to be closed for the rest of the year, we told our preschool families they didn't have to pay the tuition anymore. Yet, our, our school and our teachers continued to provide online classroom content, education, lessons, activities, Bible stories, all of these things so that our kids could continue to be prepared for kindergarten and learn more about Jesus. <laughs> I love the way our school handled this situation, and I just want to call them out as an incredible example of how to share God's love in the midst of a trying time. Our preschool is currently enrolling for the coming school year, September, so please get your pre-K-3 or pre-K-4 child enrolled at Holy Cross Lutheran Preschool, um, and I'd like you just to see this video that describes our work here at Holy Cross. Holy Cross Lutheran Preschool connects families to Jesus. Students learn and grow in Christian values. Kids pray in our classrooms and worship in our chapel. Holy Cross Lutheran Preschool also prepares kids for kindergarten. An experienced and dedicated staff maintain beautiful, bright classrooms that support academic excellence. And we've been doing it to the glory of God for over 20 years. Schedule a tour of our school today. Jesus taught us to pray, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. In the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne
throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing that was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died praise the Father praise the Son praise the Spirit three in one God of glory majesty praise for to the King of Kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, and the Lamb had conquered death, till the dead rose from their tombs, and the angel stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise for to the King of Kings. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the to the King of Kings. Now receive the benediction of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and may he give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us online this Sunday. I hope to hear from you all this week and to see you again next Sunday. God be with you.